We're going to start in the back in the bottom of the bike and work our way up and forward. First thing we're going to do is show you guys the back wheel. We're going to take off the back wheel and as you can see, this tires are flat. <laughs> oh yeah, I need to grab, grab tubes. And I'll, just, I'll take this part of it. So first thing is if you have brakes, you're going to have to take your brakes off because your back tire is probably not going to be flat. If it is, you won't have to worry about this as much. But your brakes usually are going to have to be disconnected in order to take off your rear wheel. And to do that, you just push in on the brake arm and that gives you enough slack to pop out the cable as you just saw there. From there you grab whatever size tool that you're going to need to take off your rear wheel. It can be a variety of different things, 19, 17, this one even has Allens inside the bolts. Yeah, you guys will notice like this is a female axle versus one that sticks out of the wheel is a male axle that the nut goes over. This is actually a bolt that goes into the axle on this bike. The back wheel comes off that easy. Like I said, if you have a flat, you won't have to disconnect your brakes. But it's good to know how to do it anyways. So should we just go with the flat now? Yeah. Okay. Obviously, you got to take off your valve stem cap. Don't lose it in, under the deck. Don't be a litterer. Don't lose it. And from here, some tires you can take off by hand. Sometimes you can pull up and get the tire off of there. Most of the time a tire lever is going to be easier and quicker. So, just put the tire lever underneath the bead of your tire. And depending upon how loose it is, all you have to do is pull on it. You might have to give it some leverage to pull the bead over the rim. And you're just sliding it around from there. Making sure that you're not like clipping your tube. Of course, you don't if want you to, have a flat already, yeah. it doesn't matter. When you're putting it back on, it matters. Or if you're just changing tires or something, it does. So there's that. Old tube. Now, before you put your new tube back in, let's see. And we may have different, slightly different techniques of this, but I... <laughs> I use my mouth. <laughs> or the proper way to do it. Just put Usually a little air in it. Usually put enough, just enough air in the tube to like give it a shape. Not a tube shape, but like... Just enough so that yeah, you're not going to pinch anything by putting it in there. Because if you put it in there folded up, it could be twisted and right. messed so up it's inside. It's a lot easier to do. Line up the yeah, you gotta line up valve, the valve stem. stem. And this thing is just not working out with the valve. As long as it doesn't hit us, we'll let it go, I guess. And technical difficulties. But so you just put your tube into the tire. Make sure that when you're doing this, that it's in there flush in the way that it's supposed to. There's no folds. And if you got a flat, what you're going to want to do before you put your tube back in there is run your fingers through the tube, inspect it, make sure that there's nothing in there that caused your flat. Yep, sometimes you run over a, a thorn or a piece of stick or something and it might still be sticking through your tire. And then you put a new tube in it and pump it up and the air pressure pokes a new hole in the tube. Yep. That happens quite a bit. So then from there, put your valve stem back through the valve stem hole. And you're going to start putting your tire back over the rim. Usually you don't need the tire lever to start it. But it's once it's started you that you need it. Yeah, putting them back on is a little bit easier than taking them off. And how hard it is all depends on the tire versus your rim, basically. Yep. Some rims are taller than others. Some tires are And here's a really good example. This tube was starting to get pinched between the tire and the rim. And... So you want to make sure it doesn't do that. Yep. And as you can see, we didn't even need the tire lever to put it back on. But if you did need the tire lever, you do it the opposite. You flip the tire lever from what you had. So before, we put it in there with the hook underneath the bead. This time, we're putting it in there the other Probably way. the other direction. And pushing. Yeah. Let me show them one thing that I usually do just to make sure. Need this? Nope. Once I get the tube in, Sometimes the tube where the valve stem, because you started there, the tube is pulled down towards the rim and you put the tire in and the tube can actually be underneath the bead. So what I will do is pull, push this up 
and then pull it back through. That makes sure the tube got back into the tire in so that it's not stuck there. And then I then I pump it up. Um, you know, you guys all know this is the tire pump. I guess and I'll take over at this point. Yeah, and your pressure is dependent upon your tire and what you like to ride. This is my general way to not have the valve stem go in the tire when I put this on. It's just squish it. Put this on as far as you'll do. you can get it. Flip it up. Some valves, some pumps are different. Then you should be able to tell on your tire what the pressure is. This one's a 60 PSI. Usually you're going to have either anywhere from 35 to 60 or 100. And one really important thing to pay attention to while you're pumping up your tire at about this point. Is that it's going on straight. <laughs> that and you make sure that the bead is in the rim. It's possible that your bead is out of the rim and you'll have a bubble. And your tube will come out. Yes, and if that happens, you want to catch it before you have enough air in there for it to explode. Because it will explode and it will be loud. And if you feel like really having a, a good time, do that on purpose once until it explodes. <laughs> and then you'll be very aware of what's, what's going to happen because you'll think someone blew, blew up your house. It's loud. So... So that's that. Back wheel's done. All good here. Not much to check once you have that done. Normally, if this is all you're doing, you could put it right back on, but we're taking the whole bike apart right now. So next step is our cranks. And since we've got this tool you guys are gonna be getting, it does have an eight millimeter and a six millimeter and a five millimeter, depending upon what cranks you have. Some of you won't have pinch bolt cranks. Some of you will. This one has pinch bolts, and if you do have pinch bolts, you're going to want to loosen those first because these are what holds the cranks onto the spindle. And if you don't loosen those, and then you loosen these, it can get confusing and it won't come off if the pinch bolts aren't loose. So, so once you get the pinch bolts loosened, and if you don't have pinch bolts, so you'll go straight to your main crank bolt and just loosen it up. And yeah, here's a little trick for you. Yeah. And when it comes to cranks, you usually only have to take off one side bolt. So you, sh you should be able to take off the crank arm once it's loosened and then pull the rest of it out. We'll show you. So pop that off there. This should just slide off. And it comes with the sprocket because he's not running spline drive. If you're running spline drive, there will be nothing attaching your crank to your yours. sprocket will go directly onto here. But since he's not, it just pops off and there is a crank bolt. It's a six. So this usually it's a six millimeter or five. Your your sprocket will be attached to your crank arm. Sometimes a crank arm will just have a pin that goes into the hole or the bolt like this. Say you want to change your sprocket. Basically this is how you do it. Take off your crank arm, take off your sprocket. And you should only have to take off the drive side. Well, I want to show them. Sometimes there are two-piece cranks rather than three-piece. Three-piece means you have one crank arm, the other crank arm, and the spindle. Two-piece means that one side is fused together. You can't take off that side. It all comes out as one. So the spindle and the crank arm are one yeah. piece. Yes. That makes it two pieces. Isn't there just like one-piece cranks too? Yeah, yeah. Yes. there is, but... You shouldn't have to worry about one piece cranks. Um, usually, any of you? I don't think any of you have a one. Yeah, you. I that. used to have one piece because I had a mongoose. Yeah. yeah. Now the other thing, I'm gonna spin this this way a little bit so you guys can see from back here. You'll notice the spacers. If you get new cranks, or you need to work on your cranks, the one thing that you should always pay attention to, especially if you're taking apart what you have, you can see the bike comes with spacers. There's usually a bigger spacer and a narrower one. The narrow one's usually on the drive side, which is where the chain is. There's also two extra spacers here. When you're putting cranks on a bike, if you get new ones, there are different length spindles. I got it. There are different widths of the bottom bracket here. So what he means is that if you don't have enough spacers between your cranks and your bike, you're in your bottom bracket, you will clip your cranks when they rotate, will hit your frame. Well, and the important thing you want to do when you when you put new cranks on or change your cranks or whatever, 
is you want to make sure when this is in and the spa with the spacers, you can pull your crank up and see how far away it is from your from your these are the chain stays. You can see how far away the crank is. When you put the other side on with the sprocket, you want to spin it around. You want spacers to make sure that they're even to both sides because you can end up with one that's like this close and then the other one's out here. So you want to, sometimes you have to play with how many spacers you need. Some people like to run their cranks closer, narrower, or you can run them a little farther apart. It doesn't make much difference as long as you have enough spindle to clamp down onto. And speaking of that, when you're putting cranks on and you're messing with spacers and all of these things, the key rule of thumb here is that your crank should have or should be filled three quarters of the way with the spindle. So, so when you're looking at this, you can see if your spindle, if this distance here is 100% with the finger all the way through it, you need it at least 75% of the way through it. So that more than half of the inside is covered. And generally with the light, with you can usually look down through here if you have pinch bolts. Yeah, if you have pinch bolts, you can see where your spindle goes to when you've got it tight. You want it to go past where this bolt is because that's what's clamping it down onto it. Can you put it like 100% of the way through? See that ridge right there? Yeah. If your spindle goes out past that, yeah. what's going to happen is your, your spindle bolt is going to tighten up against the spindle, but it's not going to tight hold the crank because it's not, it's going to, it's it's gonna this this yeah. rim is what holds the bolt to the and the crank arm tight. So if your spindle sticks out past that ridge, you can't tighten this crank arm down. Now one of the things that I do see a lot of kids do when they work on their cranks is they put one crank on and they say they tighten it down till it feels tight. But what that did was it, it basically pulled the spindle all the way till it's to the end. So you can't tighten this side anymore. And then what they do is they tighten the other side and they think they're done, but that side only is halfway in. And this side, and then what happens is, because this isn't on far enough, it starts to come loose. They end up tightening, trying to tighten this side more. And then it won't tighten anymore. And then this side keeps getting looser and then it strips and then it comes off and then everything's ruined. So the message <laughs> is, when you're putting your bike back together, putting cranks back on, don't take any shortcuts. Take both bolts out back and forth until you get the spindle halfway so that each side is exactly the same amount. Through. Right. So, so if say we were putting this crank back on here, or when we put this crank back on, we're gonna tighten it on there. And once it gets tight, we're gonna take off this side just to check how far it is into this crank. Right, or look in it or Yeah, you if know, you can look into it, do it. But if you can't and you have non pitch bolt cranks, then we're just going to keep going back and forth until it looks like they're both right. even. If you spaced. tighten one side and loosen the other and tighten the other, you're going to pull your, you can pull your spindle back and forth. So you want to, you basically, if it's too far one side, loosen that side, tighten the other because it'll pull it over. Now, yep. I'm going to take this off because I want to, I want to show you. So from this point, once you get one side get, off and you rock it, don't lose these. you can take off, I got it. This you can take off all the, way the entire out. thing. And this is what we mean by a two-piece crank. This is what it will look like. Your spindle and your crank are all Would all be piece. fused together, right. So we'll put these aside for now. Now, you keep. You always hear the term bottom bracket. Now, without having it all taken apart, most people probably are like, I don't really know what all is involved in the bottom bracket. This is your bottom bracket. It's basically two bearings and then a real long washer that fits exactly in between the bearings which keeps them from being smushed in. These come out and you can press new ones in. They fit very tight. The easy way, and there are tools for this, but the easy way to take this out is to do take something simple that's long enough and fits in there, fit it through. Go back to move that little washer. You wanna hit the other side of the, the bearing on the other side and you, you just tap it will come out. And you switch you might back have to, and forth. You might have to go up and then down because yes. you want it to come out as straight as possible. And you tap like that, and the same way with this side. You put this in, tap on it, this will come out. Sometimes you have to hit decent with some decent force 
because they fit very tight. And on the flip side, right. to put your cranks back in, if you're replacing your, your bottom bracket, bracket back in, do not use a hammer. Come to the bike shop. Let them you or ask them to let you use this tool or bring them bring it in and have the bike shop do it because you can mess up your entire bike if you put these in here wrong and mess up yes, the seating you. for your bearings. So if you hammer it in there crooked and it messes up how the bearing sits in there because it's not the way it was made to be anymore, your bearing's never gonna sit yeah, tight. It's, very it's gonna important ruin your frame. That these are in straight. So what this is is a bottom bracket press where you literally just take off one side here. We'll pretend like we're putting this bottom bracket in. Yes. So we're taking off the one side if you have one of these. Now, I want to point one thing out. And I don't know if you can all see it. When I move this around in there, can you see that in there? Yeah. There's, this, there's basically a little pipe in there. It's basically a, long, a real, it's like a washer that's two inches long. When you get a new bottom bracket, sometimes they'll come with extra washers that fit over your spindle. You have to check the inside diameter of your of your bottom bracket without the bearings and you want to make sure you have enough of this in that fits from the inside of the bearing to the inside of the other bearing. So basically this is why you need to bring it to the bike shop to do bottom bracket stuff because here we can look up the distance that your bottom bracket is and we can know exactly how many spacers that you need or if you need extra along with the spacer that comes with it. Now there is there is a way to do this. You'll have two bearings. Now, for the sake of it, I'm gonna pretend these are your bearings, okay? All you have to do is put a bearing at the edge of each edge. And then inside the bearings, if you're if the if the what is that the spacer that came with your bottom bracket fits perfectly between them while they're at the edges of your bottom bracket then you're good to go. If it's shorter than that distance, there should be extra washers to put in, put over your spindle to make it that distance. If it's longer, you're gonna to have to cut it off or get a different one. But it's important to make sure that everything fits that's exactly as wide as your bottom bracket. So, back to pretending that we're putting your bottom bracket in. What you're gonna first do is take one bearing, put it on here, put some grease in your frame, and put your spacer on here as well at the same time. You don't have to if you're putting the first one in, but you can. Then we're gonna put it into the frame. So at this point, we've got a bearing that's outside of the frame. We've got this through. Next, what you're gonna do is if you didn't put your spacer on at first, you're gonna put the spacer on. Then you're gonna put your other bearing on and make sure that we grease the inside of the frame and the bearings because it makes it easier. From there, we're just putting the washer back on the other side and you'll notice that there's a washer on each side. This is how they're getting pushed. And we're just gonna tighten this down. One thing you do wanna pay attention to and you might run into you can hit is your... that it can hit the frame. Just like our cranks in spacing, we need enough space on this. So you may have to figure out something to put between the washer and this rotating. Usually what I use it. It's just an extra bottom bracket spacer that I may have, you know, or you can get a bunch of washers. You just, just need something. Something to keep it outside. But what you're basically doing is using those two big washers, you're tightening them down and they're just gonna press those bearings into the bottom bracket. And with this, it's pretty simple. You just wanna make sure that the bearings are lined up properly while you're doing it. And it's gonna take some force to tighten these, but it works and it is a lot easier and safer than trying to hammer them yes. in. Using a hammer, I used a hammer for the first 10 years of riding bikes, and it was difficult. I used a two by four hammer. Yeah, see, it's all, yeah. <laughs> it's just not recommended. No, this is way easier and much safer for your bicycle. A lot more stress-free as well, because you can mess up your frame like this or mess up other parts, and if that happens, you guys aren't riding until you get a new frame. So from here, next thing we're gonna do, you guys all have brakes, right? So these are the Odyssey Springfield brakes. So we're gonna take off the brakes. They're usually a five. They are five usually a five. five. And on your multi-tool, the five is underneath of the eight. Do yeah. not miss or lose this piece, because this is your eight millimeter that 
fits over top of the bottom. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend doing too much with your own brakes. I would also recommend bringing it into the shop to have your brakes adjusted. But if you need to just take them off or put them on, it's as simple as it's just one bolt to do so. Wrong way. Backwards. It's difficult when it's upside down. Your yeah. brain can't, you gotta think about it. So it's it's as simple as you're, you're just taking these, off. And, and if you look at, if you pay attention to your brakes, one goes over the other, you'll wanna take off the other side first. Am I going the wrong way? There you go. Okay. So, because Aaron has the Odyssey Springfield brakes on here, we don't have brake springs to worry about. Except for the one that holds them yeah, together. Yeah, there's just one spring versus two. And when you're taking this off, you, you want to pay attention because you're going to have a brake spring that's underneath your bolt. So when you take this bolt off, if you're not paying attention, the spring is just going to fall off. You don't want to lose that spring. Now, obviously, you start messing with your brakes, the biggest risk is you don't have brakes until you can get them back together. Yes. And if you can't figure something out, obviously you can come to the shop. So, um, I don't want to go deeper than that. If you do want to get in depth with this, I have videos online that show you exactly how to do this. But it's kind of an in-depth process that I wouldn't recommend doing until you're totally comfortable working on the rest of your bike. Yeah, now what he means by some bikes having springs, this one doesn't have any, the springs, when you squeeze your brakes, they, come, they, they hit the wheel and you let out your lever and they pop back out. Well, this bike has a spring, this brake has a spring between the arms that just pulls the arms back this way at the top, which spreads out the brake pads. A lot of brakes will have like a spring inside this part and what you have to do is tension that spring and tighten your brake down. It can be a little bit complicated, and like he said, if it falls apart, you have to put it back together the proper way, which there are ways to research that. And another thing that might influence you to bring it to the shop, too, is that the springs are directional, so they only work on one side. If right. you take out your springs and you lose track of which one goes where, you have to figure it out. I have videos about this as well. If you do it backwards, your brakes won't work at all. Yes. From here, moving more forward, we'll do the seat last because the seat is what's holding the bike on the stand and right now. Really easy. And it's easy. Okay, so. Front wheel? Front wheel is next. Alright, yes. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> so, same as, uh, same as the back wheel, but you don't have to worry about brakes unless you have front brakes. Sometimes you'll want to on a front wheel too is loosen one and then loosen the other, especially with a female axle, because sometimes what will happen is you just end up turning the axle. Yep. So just as simple, and now we've got another tube to change. What are we doing first? Taking the valves down. Uh, you're ahead of yourself, Brooks. So we take off our valve stem cap. Next. I will tell you, take the bead off. there are lots of times where I go to change the tire and I go to pull the tube out and I forget to take the cap off. <laughs> so you go, oh, oops. Okay, someone who's not Brooks, what's next? Um, take the tube out. Take the tube out. Now someone who's not Brooks or Zach, what's next? Um, fill up the tire tube a little bit so it has some shape in it. That's you a shape. No, you Ripped. should feel your fingers inside. Ooh, that is yeah. technically, you can do one then the other. These are two interchangeable things, but well, before your tube goes back in here, you want to check it. You also have to take the valve cap off the new, tit, new tube. Ha ha. All right, so Aaron's going to pop some air in there. While we got this off here, Sometimes you have hub guards depending upon if your bike came with it or not. They go on different ways. This one just pops on there. Some of them are convenient like that. Some of them are like mine where I have a shoelace that goes all the way through everything. It just depends on which one you have. And when you're buying one, you can decide that for yourself. All right, so what are we doing next? Putting the new tube in. There we go. Yep, line up the valve stem. 
show them too like if you get once you put the valve stem in and get it all on the tire if it's not sticking straight out like you can just shift the tire a little bit yep you know, we um, usually you purpose. want your valve stem sticking straight out of the rim if it's crooked you could end up with a flat because it's going to rub funny on your on the hole in your rim okay so from here if your wheel is offset your valve stem will come out crooked or if the tube is offset yep. it's hard to see and from here you guys might not be able to see that if that's the case hold the spokes all you got to do is hold the spokes and, and rotate the, the tire yep move the wheel and it'll move the tube with it until it's straight from here what are we doing pushing the beat back on correct Sometimes, like we said, you don't have to use the tire lever, but this time we will. Putting the tire lever in the opposite way we started, just pushing on it. Be careful of the tube, yep. Yes, we want to make sure that we're not pinching the tube while we're doing this. And now it's ready to pump back up. And then as you're pumping up, should you like make sure that the bead is even around the tire yep. somewhere? Yeah, you just want to make sure that it's not sticking out. You don't have a tube oh, popping out okay. between well, the rim and the tire. Right, and like I said, I usually just pinch that, push the tire down so that the nozzle or the valve doesn't go all the way back up in. We already looked at what the tire pressure is. Sometimes if you're running a different tire in the front, you want to make sure you check the pressure on it. Once it gets to where it's taking the shape in the tire, then you want to go. Sometimes Sometimes I do this because that makes sure that the bead seats all the way around the tire. Just so once you know that it's it's on and the bead is set, then pump it up. I actually went through four tubes one time because of my beads. It what had happened was is I had hit it so hard that I had torn off the actual strip that went around it that yeah. held it on, and then it would pop out every yep. time. Yep, you got to get a new tire at that point. Well, that's why I ended up with one white and one black tire. So, 60 pounds. Take this off. And you should always double check once you've pumped up the tire that nothing has come off and that it's straight. Sometimes if you want to do this, sometimes if a tire is lopsided, you want to... That looks pretty good. Sometimes it'll bob up and down, and that means your bead's out on one side and in on the other. You can uh, let some air out, adjust that. So, we'll set that aside. And next, we will move on to the forks and the stem because these are the same... Okay, tie. this stem is different than all of your stems in that it only has one bolt. Where is it? Is right it here. in yep. there? Yep. Okay, so this stem only has one bolt rather than two bolts in the back. It's got one in the front that clamps it. But it's doing the same job. What brand is it? Odyssey. Odyssey. So when you're doing this and you're doing anything with your stem to where you're, you're adjusting your handlebars back and forth because they're not straight, you're taking your stem off and tightening your headset, anything to do with where your stem needs to move at all you need to loosen this bolt or the two bolts behind it which you guys will all have first because if you don't loosen this then it's tight on your forks and you can't do anything yeah you're going to see how all this goes together this yeah. is something that you can use your tool for yeah. mine's in my pocket so i grabbed it and obviously you don't have to take the bolts all the way out. No, just loosen them up like this. And now we have access to tightening our headset, turning our bars to adjust them, taking them off. If you're going to take them off, next logical step is your top cap. Taking off your... Uh, uh, different, different... Sorry, go ahead. You're good. Different bikes will have different styles of top caps. Usually they'll have one that's... that's a six. That, yes, and it'll screw into your fork with a bolt. There might be a two-piece. This one is a one-piece that screws directly into the fork. Which is something you, most of you will only have to worry about. There are different styles that have different things. That right. Now, yours will, prob your, yours will probably have just the top part and a bolt. It the, does the same job. You're holding this and this together with that piece. Now, the important thing here is I'm holding the, the, I'm holding the forks. Right, the reason ready? for that is because this now will come off and come off the fork. Boom. And now the fork the fork can come out of the frame. Right, you know what? Do you want to undo the cable so you can set those and you can show them that? Because okay. it's otherwise going to hang. So if you have brakes and you're taking things apart, you're going to have to take off the brake cable. If you're working on the ground, you can set your handlebar on the ground. It's not a big deal. I don't want my handlebars just hanging here by the cable. So so we have to line up all of the slots, which we should have done first. 
You definitely want to do that before you take out your bars because it's just easier. But we're just taking the cable out of the lever. Okay, so as now we do. just hang here. Yep. Now, basically, this is what is known as your headset. Bottom bracket, headset. They're basically doing the same job. They're providing a bearing, a roller bearing. For rotation. For rotation, correct. Now, your fork is designed, basically it's similar to your spindle. You need the right length for your head tube. And most modern bikes now are going to have what's called an integrated headset. Now, what that means is that in the old days, the front tube of a bike would have a pressed in cup here. Now it's molded in most, most of the time. Got this bike right here has the pressed in cup. Okay, yeah, so see some of some bikes still have it. So so what this means basically is if you guys look at this frame, can you see how this is this cup here is part of the frame? The bearings go into that cup. Well on this frame, the blue part is the frame and the black part is a cup is that's pressed part. into it. So this is where you could sometimes have bearings that go into this cup, right. or you can have these exact bearings that we have here that go into the cup. And I believe it depends on the style. That bike is going to have a round ring with bearings in it that are going to be greased. So what I'll say here is if you have a bike that has cups, bring it to the bike shop if you need to work on your headset, because if you take that apart and you take off that cap, bearings can go everywhere. If they're loose. And it's probably a cartridge thing still. Either way, but yes. bearings can go everywhere, and if that happens, you're not riding until yep. you get a new bearing. Now, for the sake of this, we're going to talk about the integrated headset, which can have cups like that. These are what's called campy spec. It's a 45 degree angle. And what that means is that both of these bearings are exactly the same and interchangeable. You can use yep. the bearing on the top or the bottom. It doesn't they, matter. They have to be flipped over. Yes. Integrated headset has to have a fork that has an integrated bearing race. Some forks, you'll notice when you buy a headset, some forks will come with a piece that you have to slide over your fork if your fork is not already set up for integrated headset. But most forks, most. I would say 95% of BMX forks today have this built in and is something that you're not going to have to worry it's, about. Especially if you buy an aftermarket fork. But what you're gonna look at when you do this is that I'll, go, I'll just show them. You should have a 45 so, degree angle. So if you look at this thing, you can see how it's got like this angle here. That's, let me see the bearing. That is where our bearing goes. And you can, oops, inside. the inside of the so bearing. So you can see that it fits very flush. So you notice it's got an angle here. And when you put the bearing on there, show it's them the inside flush. Of the bearing. The and angle, then the, the bearing is also inside the bearing. The bearing matches there. this. So, so what you're going to look at if you're buying a fork or if you're doing anything with a fork where you're replacing your headset, if it's flat, that means you're going to need that piece that comes with your headset. If it looks like this and your bearing fits on it flush just like that, you don't have to worry about it. So at this point, I think we're ready to put it back together as soon as our buddy... I have a question about the frame. What's like the average uh, weight for it? Um, Modern the average frames? weight for a frame is probably five pounds I would say which your, is your standard yes if, around five if you're buying more like a jump frame or a heavy duty frame it's gonna be a little more and if you're buying that you know some frames are lighter they're gonna be a slightly less I would say and and like a racing BMX frame could be down to like three pounds or less but you, your average if you're looking at an aftermarket frame for BMX bike for tricks you're looking at around five pounds so before we start talking about uh, stems and bars we're gonna put this back on because it's a lot easier to work on your stem and your handlebars with it all put together. Yes. So now, you gotta make sure the bearing's the right way. You can make sure of that by putting the bearing into the frame first before you put it onto the fork. It only goes in there one way. If we try to put this bearing in here upside down, it's not gonna work. So now, as far as grease, the bearing is greased inside. It's if you have a tight fit, sometimes it's it's okay to like 
smear a little grease on this around this. It's not 100% necessary because it basically is turning on its bearings and not on the metal. So, and and since we're starting to put the bike back together, and he mentioned grease, when it comes to grease, what you want to think about is you put grease anywhere that two metal pieces come into contact with each other. So right here, we can move. put we can put grease on our fork because two pieces of metal come into contact with each other. We don't 100% need it as much, but it can. The bearing is basically helping us out there. Now, you guys are all going to want to come up here for yeah. this one. This is So when it comes to putting the headset important part of a together, headset, you have to pay attention to this. They'll figure it out on the internet later. <laughs> so, when you get your headset, it's going to come with a whole bunch of different parts. It's going to come with these two pieces here and then the cap. So this piece right here only goes into your bearing one way and it goes in the top. And what it does is it basically makes the top part the same as the fork. It looks, it's, it fits into the bearing so that that's what the bearing pivots. And if you don't have this, look what happens with your fork. Yeah. It's just wobbling around. So you have to make sure that you have this piece that goes in the fork top and make sure you get a smooth part this of the whole headset. system holds everything tight. This piece will have a, usually a little rubber ring in it. So it's a little bit hard, you know, it, it slides on and it on. stays. You, should, and then, you usually can let go of your fork, but it's not advised because sometimes it'll still slide on. So when we hold this and you look, you I want, can't, it doesn't wobble. There's no play there. Right. That means it's proper. Here's a part that's, that's just like with your cranks. You have a stem, just like your crank arm fits on. The stem has to go on. Now here's what's important. So when we put our stem on, you have to, here's how you determine how many spacers you need. You want to make sure that you, now here, take this off for a second. I want to show them what happens if you don't have this brace. Put it back on. If you don't have enough spacers in, there we go. Okay, so, Okay, if this is sticking up past your stem, when you put your top cap in, you want to be pressing this and this all together. Okay, if you put that top cap in here now, it's only going to tighten down to the top of the fork. It's not going to be holding anything tight. It'll still be loose. This is why you need space. So, okay, you can pull that back off of there. Pull it tight. I got it. Yeah. Watch your face, yeah. everybody. Okay. So. You have to experiment a little bit. You want this to be as, as closed up as possible. And you don't have to put your stem all the way on to do this. You can put your you stem can, yeah, you like can this. You need to be about an eighth of an inch below the top at least. We just want to make sure that there's a little bit of room. Come close and look at this. This, is, a, see, this is about the maximum amount of room you want. But because I have one bolt in the middle, I know that it's securing it. When you have two, if your stem is too high off your fork, if, it's look, if it looks like oops, if it looks like yeah. this, you, if it's too, too far. yeah, you're going to clamp your top bolt this, down, and it's going to pinch, and it's not going to be holding on to anything. It's the same rule as your spindle on your cranks. You want three fourths of the way or more. So you understand then? So you can put on one spacer, two spacers. If your fork's longer or shorter, but you want to make sure that you have at least like an eighth of an inch of clearance. Any question now, about that? Well, real quick, this is what he was asking about when it's loose. A lot of times what happens when it's loose is this part won't be tightened all the way. So what can happen is it's not pinching everything. Then it wobbles back and forth. So usually you just tighten, you loosen this, tighten this down some more until you have no play. Okay. And then but you don't want it too tight because if you tighten it too tight, then your bars won't spin. So there's a over tight so we can show them. Okay, now it that, probably still actually this is pretty tight. good. Yeah, no. So if also, it's too tight, your bars are not going to just smooth. You'll turn them and they'll stay. There. Yeah, it'll so be you hard want, to turn. Them you want no wobble, but you want it to still move. And we'll show you at the end how you can check the wobble. And you want to line up your bars and stuff. You can, yeah. do this after, you can do this afterwards or real quick. Right. Once this is where you want it, once this is tight, then you still have to tighten your, your stem back down. Yep. So next up is the handlebars. And again, the park tool you're going to be given it can do work. all of the all of the necessary parts for that on your bike. 
when it comes to handlebars, if you're taking them off, you don't really have to worry about a ton because we're just taking these pieces apart. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna loosen it up first before we get into the parts that you really have to pay attention to. And like he said, if you wanna take pictures of the way things go together, it's never a bad thing. At the worst, you just have to delete some pictures. Yep, if you don't need them. But if you're so, if you're confused by how many pieces there are to different stuff, take a photo. If you want to grab the uh, handlebars, so I want to loosen this, they don't go okay. forward. So this is, can kind of be complicated to do by yourself. Sometimes this is difficult to do because you have to hold on to four bolts and the bars and the cat and the top four front plate. This is a front front load stem. There's several different kinds of stems. All right, so when it comes to a stem, you have so now you plate, now what you have is bars. an air bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You got the bars, you got the front plate, you've got the stem, you've got your bolts. When you're doing this, you can put your bolts into your plate before you put it on there, and it can make it easier for to it to go together instead of having to hold one of four bolts. Yeah. And so when you're doing this, and then what'll happen is you'll drop your wrench. And yes. when you go to pick up your wrench, you'll drop all the bolts out. <laughs> and you know. He's telling the truth. <laughs> so, so you're going to put your bars in there. And at this point, just look at the, the pattern on here. This is called knurling. This is how your bars stay in place. Yeah, you when want to center, center it. To center it as best you can when you're putting it in there. And then from here, what you're going to do is you're just going to spark all four bolts. Once you get them started, you're gonna to to make sure that your bars are centered, which you, you have a little bit before you get it too tight. You can, you can keep doing this because they will they will move. Yes. An important thing when you're tightening your bars down, start. You want to tighten one, then another. A lot of times I will do what a crisscross, like make an X. This one, this one, then this one, this one. That is important once you get them to the yes. point where they're actually doing. But I usually do it just to keep it in my head that that's the. I just do it the same way. Now. What you want when you finally tighten your bars down is you want your front plate of your stem or your top plate, you want a, an equal gap, either the front and the back or the, or the top and the bottom. So the way this works is your cap and your stem have a gap between them. So you guys can see, and I'm sure you've seen on your bikes, between the cap and the stem, there's that little gap there. You want to always keep that gap the same on both sides. What that doing is it's taking pressure off of what happens is if you do it lopsided you're, you're putting too much pressure on two of your bolts and not enough on the other two and they could break or it could break your stem various things can go wrong it's, if you do them all evenly and they're all carrying the same load and it's just that much uh, stronger overall so the moral of the story with your stem and your bars is do it slowly so that you do it right. And what you'll do is, like I said, like this one, this one tight. Yeah, you're going to find that out point, yeah. that as you tighten one, you're going to draw this, the top plate or the front plate in, and then you're going to have to go to the other ones. And we'll, you'll know you're done when they all feel like they have an equal tension and are tight. And if as it, he said, once you get these bolts snug and you get your handlebars where you need them, because you can't. Once you get everything tight, you can't really adjust your handlebars without loosening them again. So once they're tightened just a little bit and your bars will still move, get them where you want them, then you're gonna to start to do the crisscross pattern. So if you start here, you're gonna go down and just keep crossing until they're tight. Like and he like said. I said, as you tighten one, you gotta check them all again because if they're not tightened the same, one of them will be looser than others. And once you, you'll know you're done when you check them all and they're all, they're all tight. So it's at that point you make sure that your bars are where you want them. Typically when you're starting out, the idea is to keep your handlebars and your fork close. Maybe your bars are a little bit more forward. So if you look at these, they're pretty much aligned. The bars straight up and down, and the fork straight up and down are lined up with each other. And it's until you kind of develop your riding skills and figure out whether or not you like them more forward, perfectly straight in line, sometimes even a little bit back. Yep. Yeah, when you're just throwing stuff together, that's usually 
unless you know where you like your bars already, that's a pretty standard. All right, so it's tight. Our gap is the same on both. And Did now, you tighten this, yet? this is where we get to tightening the headset down. So before we tighten gotcha. this all the way down, we tighten our headset. Make sure that the headset is tight. That's tight, so we can move on to tightening. Well, you don't. You want to check the rotation of your bars. If you over tighten your top cap, your bars will yes. be stiff. Make sure this is tight. And then from here, we'll talk about the brake lever a little bit. Most brake levers you're going to encounter are going to be levers that you can take completely off without taking off your grips. So you can just loosen the bolt. Some are not. All depends the way on. out. It just depends upon your lever. But most of the time, you're going to be able to take off and put on your brake lever without taking off grips. So it's just one bolt. comes all the way off. Don't lose this bolt. If you're going to set it aside, just start it again. Because I've lost this bolt before. Yep. It happens. When you're putting it back on, it's fairly simple. Just the reverse of how you took it off. And when it comes to your lever, you can just snug it up a little bit. Find where you like it. And you should be able to keep moving it a little bit at that point. Once you find your spot that you like it, finish tightening it down. It doesn't have to be super tight. And really, I would say you don't want to tighten this one as tight as you possibly can because if you do crash, you'd rather your lever move than your lever break. I'm going to show you how I change grips. We're so, just going to show with one grip. Yeah. Can't you take use off an air compressor too? Air compressor is the way to go when it comes to taking off and putting on grips. But not everybody has one, so. I basically use a little teeny flat screwdriver. Try not to scrape up your bars, try not to poke a hole through your grips, but I just try and slide it in there a good bit. This is just rubbing alcohol, put in a spray bottle. Spray it in there. Then I run the screwdriver around. And that, see how that bend is all loose now? Then I'll take do the other end, same thing. Now, if you don't, if your if your grips are shot, you can just slice them off with the blade. But basically, whoop, there's much that. easier than anything else you probably have done without an air compressor. So, rubbing alcohol. Ask your mom; I'm sure she has some. Yeah, it's a pretty common thing in this. Now, to put it back on, if you use a lot of rubbing alcohol, it's going to go on and off just like it just came off. Sometimes you can, if you're doing it quick and you put, you got your new one, I'll take the spray bottle and just give a quick, just put this in go, whoosh, whoosh. and then what I usually will do is shake a little bit, get it out the excess, slide it on. If it slides on easy, then I, then I, then I have too much. If it doesn't slide on at all, I have to put more. So I'm going to spray it just a little bit. Now it should slide right on. The only problem is now it's like this. So I just take it off, kind of just try and dry just enough. The alcohol dries fast. You want to dry just enough of it that you can still get it on. I hope I didn't overdo it. If you get a little bit of throttle grip with alcohol, it eventually will dry. Alcohol dries very fast. That's why I use it. It evaporates very quickly. Always have bar ends in your bars. It is important. People have seriously, seriously injured and there has there was just a report of someone actually losing their life from not having bar ends. And that was a real story. So once you get all of the front end and everything back to the point where you can put your brake cable back in, it's the exact reverse order of what we did earlier. So you want to throw this front wheel back on? Okay. Okay, so when it comes to front wheels, they're not, the reel and the rim itself is not directional as much as the tire is. So you don't have to think about it when you're putting your tire on, only when you're putting everything back on. So if you have a directional tire, so take a look at my front tire here. Notice how it kind of looks like arrows. If there is a directional tire, you will be able to tell which direction should be forward and it will have arrows on the tire. When you're putting your front wheel on, you just want to make sure that you're putting it on with the right one facing forward. Put your front wheel back on. Just make sure that it's going forward. Front wheel, drop-offs are pretty standard. 
They should be about the same, it's usually the same size your axle, you know, enough leeway to fit the wheel. If you have washers, make sure the washers are on the outside. You should use washers. Sometimes they, they're, you don't have to. What a washer does is it allows you to tighten the nut and it gives an extra rubbing surface so that you're not tearing up the fork or whatever okay. else. Or, oh, yeah. So it's not sliding against your fork, it's actually turning against the washer. Sometimes you'll have the washer with the little hook part that goes into the little hole. These forks don't have that. Um, basically those are a safety feature in case your wheel comes loose. Um, one of the things you should probably do fairly often when you ride a lot is check and make sure your front wheel is tight. You can judge usually how straight it is in by where the middle of the tire should be in the middle of your fork. You want to make sure it's all the way up in the dropouts, which again, being on the ground or upside down usually makes that easier. One thing to note here is if you put your front wheel on and it is all the way seated in your dropouts and it's still very far off centered, bring it to the bike shop. You could have a bent wheel. Yes. It will, it will. Or a bent fork. And it's better to bring it to the bike shop than to offset it yourself and not have it all the way in the fork. Because that's not as safe. Cranks? Okay. Use this one. This is one point when taking pictures of how you take things apart is important. Because these spacers need to go on here the way that they came off. And you've got the two washers around. So we've got now washers. We talked about how this works earlier. It yeah. might not go in because you have to walk, line up that spacer in there with your cranks. Correct. So if you put it in there and it seems like it's not working, that could be one. Another thing you can do is put it in without any washers except for the initial cap or cover. And then if your crank hits your frame, you can determine then how many washers you need to put on there by how close it is or far away from your frame. Now this one's pressed in. But a lot of times this, you guys will notice when you take this stuff off. The hole that's in the sprocket is initially made for a 22 millimeter spindle or a 24 sometimes. And it will come with a, a washer that fits inside that hole. And you guys can see how that silver washer is bigger on this side because it's up against the back. But it makes the hole smaller. Now that should, that what spacer makes it fit on the spindle. If you don't have that spacer in there, your sprocket will wobble all over the place, okay? Now, what I see a lot of people do is they put that, that either on backwards or they put it on and it doesn't go through the hole or they've got it on the wrong side. What you want it to be is it goes through the back side and it should be flush with the front edge because you want your crank arm, you want your crank arm to be up against the sprocket. You don't ever want to put a washer on the outside of this because this it attaches in two spots if you have a washer out there what you're doing is you're going to make your crank wobble if you do not put this spacer in the right way or in at all and your sprocket is loose on your spindle what you are going to do is eventually you're going to wear out your sprocket you are probably going to cause everything to come loose and what i've seen at least three different times is because this was assembled incorrectly i've seen people basically ruin their sprocket ruin their crank arm and ruin their spindle and have to spend almost a hundred dollars on more. new cranks and a new sprocket over a one little washer piece that they put on wrong. That's probably the number one thing that I have It's an expensive repair that's done wrong when kids work on their own bike. So we're going to put our bolt for our sprocket into our crank first before we put our crank back on. When you put this in, don't tighten it all the way down because you want to make sure that these two holes line up straight before you tighten that down. That leads you into, you need to make sure that your cranks are aligned properly when you put them on. So what we're going to do is put it back on. So once you get it on there perfectly straight, obviously you want to make sure that your cranks are aligned with each other. And we once you tighten, get it on there, we can tighten this down. More. Yep, we tighten our crank bolt. Because it's, it's held in place by that, so now it's where we want Or sprocket bolt, not crank yes, bolt. Sprocket bolt. Tighten it nice and snug. You don't want it to come loose, but you don't need to put all of your weight into it. So like we said earlier, you want to make sure that your spindle is evenly spaced in your cranks. So what we're doing right now is taking out the other bolt to check where it's at and see if we need so we're to. So see if we need to pull it. the spindle either way. So the main thing that you guys want to take away from this is just make sure that your spindle is even in your cranks. And when it comes to tightening your cranks down. Yeah, see, now you, this is tightened to where they'll, they're a little stiff. 
If you like your cranks to stay in one place sometimes when you're doing tricks, you can tighten it a little bit. If you want them to spin real free, you loosen them a little bit. What you don't want is wiggle. If you loosen them till there's a wiggle, you're going to eventually wear your bearings out faster. So, and yeah, I, so I if like, you like crank flips. I like them that. to spin, but not too, I don't like them too loose. So then if you have pinch bolts, once you tighten the side bolts, that's when you tighten your pinch bolts, not before, because if you tighten these pinch bolts, then tightening these side ones isn't going to do anything because this is how you keep them in place. Right. With, so, if you guys don't have any questions, the next step is putting your back wheel back on. This is why we loosened our brakes up. Because with the pressure in the wheel, you have to squeeze it through the brake. Sometimes you have to let air out of your tire and pump, put it on yes. and pump it back up. So, putting this in, since we're doing the chain, we're not going to tighten it down all the way yet. Now we're going to get our chain right. So when we're putting this on, we make sure that our rear sprocket is on the same side as our front. Yep. For obvious reasons. Next up. And when you change a tire, same thing. Make sure you've got the direction. If you have a left-hand drive bike, which some bikes are, you have to make sure you put the tire on so that it goes on that way. No master link in this one. We just do it. The first thing we have to do Let's figure out how long it how needs long to of a be. chain do we need? Now this chain comes with this pin is actually in a half link, so we're going to check and see if with a half link it's the right length. If it's not, then we take off that end and we leave we take off the links that we need to take off, and we push a pin through and leave the pin in because we're going to reuse the pin because we don't have a master link. If you have a half link chain, make sure you're doing it the proper direction. So to figure out how long your chain needs to be, can hold the breaker for a sec. You just put it on your bike, you you tension everything it? up. So you're gonna put your chain on, tension everything up as if it were on there already, and see where it lines up with on your extra pieces here. So as you can see, it lines up pretty well with one of our links here. So what we're looking at right now, figuring this out, is we're figuring out if we broke the chain right here and we lined it up, to see how tight it would be on the bike. And since our wheel's all the way forward, it's pretty pretty tight, so we don't have any room to go forward to loosen that up. So then we go one more, and we'll see that's you go way too that. loose. That seems like it's gonna be good. Okay. So when so, you're doing this, you gotta keep track of where you're gonna break it. At. Right there. So what we're gonna do, we've got the chain breaker. Internal chain tensioning too. This bike that. does. I'll show you that after we're done. So I'm holding the link that I want to that I want to, to break. This is another thing that the bike shop can help out a lot with. Yes. Because breaking a chain is a little bit complicated. The piece of the tool that it goes in that holds the chain. You can kind of see how the teeth go in between. You want to make sure the chain is sitting in there for your tool, so that your pin is on the so that your chain tool pin is on the pin for the chain. The hard part is you want to push this pin through and you'll, you can see it start to go through. But you don't want to push it all the way through. Right, if it comes if you out, you're going to have a out, lot of trouble getting yeah. it back in. If you pop that pin all the way out, that's what's connecting the chain once we put it back on. So if so, we pop it all the way out, we have to put it back in. Right, so I want to pop it all the way through until I think that it's stuck in this last side. You can stop early and see if the chain comes apart and if it doesn't come apart yet then you've got a little bit farther to go now if you have a master link you don't have to worry about this you push the pin all the way out but you also have to take off another link because the master link goes back in whereas this one I'm not putting a link back in I'm just hooking links together but because this I'm doing this without a master link we want the exact length we need so whenever you're changing your chain and you have a master link that master link is going to be an extra link. It's a little bit of trial and error. It's kind of like woodworking and stuff though. Measure twice, cut once. You want to make sure you don't overdo anything. Hey Aaron, I'm going to stop the so we put it back together. We do exactly what we did when we were checking how long it needed to be. But this time we're going to put it back together totally. When you put it put it on before if you're going to put it back together on the bike like this, you want the pin facing the easiest way for you to 
So you want to think about this when you're pushing the pin through as well, especially if you have a half length chain, because if you push that pin through the wrong way, and then you go to put it back on the bike, it makes it really hard to maneuver the chain breaker into the bike to tighten it down. So you can also do this without the uh, chain on the sprocket, and then you can turn the sprocket to put it on. So we line everything up, and just start tightening, making sure that it's going smoothly. You don't feel any, if it gets stuck and you have to really twist hard, something's wrong. So we got our chain all the way on. Once again, if you guys need to do chain stuff, I'd recommend bringing what we're going to do to put the back wheel on and get it where it needs to go is I take one hand, grab the wheel underneath the frame, depending upon how we do this. It's easier if it's upside down and we're sitting behind it because then we can pull and tighten at the same time. But since it's on the, the bike stand, grab the wheel, pull it backwards until we feel like our chain tension is proper. And we're just going to snug up one side, see if it's good. And once we get it snug on one side, we're going to check how centered it is and where, whether or not we need to go one way or the other. If we need to move it at all, grab the wheel on either side that you need it to go to, pull it the direction you need to go, and then this time we're going to take our tool and tighten the opposite side down pretty snug. So at this point it should be centered and our chain tension should be pretty good. I mean, when it comes to back wheels, you're going to have to mess with it and do it probably more than once to get it perfect. But if we do it right, everything's centered, our chain tension is good, and all we need to do is tighten the other side down, double check it before we extra tighten it, spin it, make sure it's all centered, and if it's all good, we tighten it down so that it doesn't move. Your rear wheel is somewhere where you can tighten pretty tight and if you have pegs, sometimes you want to tighten it pretty tight so that things don't move. And once you're done with that, you can reconnect your brakes. When it comes to your seat, that's the only thing we didn't talk about was adjusting your seat, but it's pretty simple. Yeah, there's your seat post. Oh, we need to do the pedals too. Yeah. Also the pedals. So, I'll go over there. I'm going to the seat. All right, so the seat post is usually just one bolt for one nut, one bolt or one nut that you're loosening. You loosen that or tighten that to adjust the height of your seat and how centered it is. And then your seat itself is going to be one of a couple different ways. Most of the time you got pivotal, which is just a bolt that actually goes, that is actually inside your seat. You kind of just have to find it. And this bolt is how you adjust the angle of your seat. And that's pretty much it. And you're done and ready for your pedals with air. Pretty simple there. Okay. Pedals are pretty simple as well. There's a, there's a neat little trick to remember. Your pedals are threaded opposite each other. The reason for that is because as you pedal each side, when you're pedaling, you don't want your pedals to unscrew. So they go on so that they, that doesn't happen. I got a really easy go way to say this. So what that means, don't worry about any of the reverse threading or anything like that. Just remember that no matter which side you're working on, it's exactly the same tightening direction as the other side. Right, and the easy way to remember that is with your wrench up up like this. And the go bike wherever your face go. And the bike Correct. standing straight up and down, not upside down. Right. You'll see that your, your pedals have flat sides on them to, you know, the wrench fits on the flat sides. Tightening your pedals is always towards the front of your bike, no matter which side you're on. Easy so, way to remember that. When your bike is in the direction that you ride it, your pedals tighten the same way you pedal. Correct. Now what you have to do, sometimes it's easier to get leverage by putting your pedals in one way or the other, or putting your crank arms one in front or behind. But you always tighten towards the front. Now on the other side, it's exactly same the same. Tighten forward. Loosen. I back. probably can't get enough leverage yeah, like well, this. Well, we don't need to do the other one, so. But anyways, that's the easy way to remember which way your pedals thread on. That's Other than that, it. making sure you got the right pedal. Yeah, oh Most yeah. left pedals will have ridges one way or another. Some sort of the ridge. The right pedal 
does not. There should also now, be Now, also, the you'll see, that, see how this has the R, but this pedal has an L. But the easy way, just quick glancing, is if your pedal has these grooves on it, it's the left. If it's smooth like this, it's the right. So, before you guys ride, there's, it's really simple. We're just going to go from the front to the back of the bike. First thing you're going to do, check your headset. To do that, you can push forward and backward like this, and turn the bike like this, yep. lift the bike upside down, and hold the forks, and move it back and forth like this. You can see his headset might be a little tiny bit loose still. That is a very extreme way to test it. Check your bars, make sure everything's good here. Check your front wheel, so you're gonna want tools to do this. Make sure that it's tight. Check your spokes, make sure everything's good, you don't have any broken spokes. Check your air pressure. Then from here, we're gonna go to the back. Check your seat, make sure it's tight. Check your pedals, make sure they're tight. Check your chain tension. Spin your cranks, make sure that your yep. cranks are tight as well. If everything's good here, we can move to the back of the bike. Check it here, check and make sure that it's tight. Check your brakes. And last thing would be check your back air pressure. You should be good to ride. You definitely wanna do that at least once a week when you ride, if not every single time that you ride, because that is when you find broken parts and broken pieces and things that need attention on the bike. Loose stuff will wear out quicker. Yes. And also could cause failure. So I think we're we're all set. You guys have any questions about anything we went over. If you do, come into the shop, ask these guys for help. Hit me up on Instagram. I can answer your questions there. Leave a comment on YouTube as well if you need help. Always willing to help people who need it when working on bikes or with tricks. Park Tool donated the multi-tools for these guys and we used nothing but Park Tools for the whole thing. And we're still using Park Tools. Shout out you to Park Tool. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching. And let me know if you made it to the end. Goodbye.